Good evening. It's uh, six o'clock in Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. It's five o'clock in Jamaica and four o'clock in Belize. Welcome to Let's Talk Access, a social media program produced and presented by the UWI Open Campus. I am your host, Cleveland Sam. Thank you for joining us wherever in the world you are this evening. Today, we feature the Consortium for Social Development and Research, which is an integral part of the UWI Open Campus family. The consortium has five units, and today we will learn a bit more about the exciting work each of these units uh, is doing and how they are impacting lives right across the Caribbean. It is my pleasure to introduce the unit heads as well as the director. First, Mrs. Cecile Minot, and she's the director of the consortium for um, social development and research. And as I said, also the head of the Caribbean Child Development Center. Cecile, good evening. Good evening, Cleveland, and good evening, everyone. All right. We also have with us Mr. Lauren Marsh, and he's the acting head of the Hugh Sharer Labor Studies Institute. Lauren? Good day, everyone. Thanks for having me. And he is going to be our um, thorn among the roses this evening. And we also have Sarita Buchanan, and she's the head of the Social Work Training and Research Center. Sarita, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. All right. And we may or may not be joined by our colleague, Taitu Heron, who is the head of the Women and Development Unit, called WAND, also part of this open campus family. But let's start with you, Cecile Minot. Um, what is the mandate of the Consortium for Social Development and Research? Okay, so the Consortium for Social Development and Research is the unit within the open campus that, that is primarily responsible for research. And we do what is called action research. We're also the, re the outreach arm of the, universe, of the open campus. So what the units do is that we, we work within communities, we work with the government throughout the region, and we would implement research in order to inform policy, governmental decisions, as well as to inform programs that we develop. We work very closely with the private and the public sector in developing workshops, and the units will speak some more about what they themselves do. But we do workshops, we do seminar based on the topic of the day and based on the area of expertise that each of our units have. So each unit have a different area of expertise, and that's where we, that's where we, we focus our research and our programs. All right. So the consortium, as I said, seems to be an amalgamation of several units, as you said, doing research. Um, can you recall all the context in which the whole consortium came about, how it came about? Because um, you have the Labor Studies Institute, which is by itself is um, probably older than the open campus. Um, <laughs> can, you, can you give us some information on that? Well, the Consortium for Social Development was developed um, when the open campus was formed. But each unit was before a part of, you know, remember our long distance learning environment. So we were all on the Rex Nettleford. We were the ones that we still did right. what we do now. Right. But, right. So, um, so we still did our projects. We did our research. And we did it primarily in the communities and we work with governments. So we, we, our mandate was the same. It's just that we, we function on the RECs within the distance learning. Then when Open Campus came about and we looked at, um, they looked at the structure and looked at the, the four units and said, well, you do similar things, but in different areas. And so right. we became the consortium for social development and research. Okay, there you go. I was wondering myself. And that's in a nutshell, because there's a whole lot more I could tell you, which I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> but since we only have an hour, I've scrunched it and made it very. We do. We do appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, part of the the consortium is something that you yourself are very much involved in, the Caribbean Child Development Center. What exactly is the CCDC? Okay, so the Caribbean Child Development Center is the unit within the consortium that looks at children birth to 18. Our area of focus is research again and development. So we, 
we look at child development. Um, any project that we do, we would be we would be looking at how a child, how it has an impact on the children. We look at child rights and child participation. We look at um, children and violence. Um, and one of the things that has risen is our Bloom Early Childhood Centers, which we are very proud of um, mm -hmm. because this is the early childhood component of CCDC. So CCDC, um, as I said before, primarily does focus on the birth to 18 years. And we do training, we do program development, um, we do research, um, we do projects with partners, not just locally in Jamaica, but also regionally across the Caribbean as well as internationally. So right, actually, so that's what my, was my next question, Cecile. Um, the name suggests that it has a regional reach. What would you say has been the impact of um, the Child Development Center across the region? Can you give us some examples? Okay, so we, are, we, we partner very closely with UNICEF, both UNICEF here in Jamaica, as well as in the Eastern Caribbean. And we have been able over the years, due to the child, right fo child rights focus that we have, we've been able to assist UNICEF in the Eastern Caribbean to carry out a needs assessment on the child rights and child justice and child and children's safety in the 12 countries across the, the Eastern Caribbean. We've also been able to work with them in, in putting together child rights training. We have also been able to work with UNICEF in providing early childhood education training for our early childhood practitioners across the region. Now, every component of these training have, have a research side of things where we monitor, we evaluate, and then we would tweak the programs accordingly. And out of some of these workshops and programs, we've been able to develop um, well, one such program we've been able to develop is the present early childhood degree program that is now within Open Campus, because we're, after working with our partners and recognizing that there was such a need, Open Campus was able to facilitate this need. Okay, so it seems as if you're doing some really good work across, across the region. And you mentioned Bloom. So my understanding is Bloom is like almost like a, a lab but a real life daycare child. Tell us about Bloom. So as we did our research around the region on early childhood, we recognized that um, although our teachers were getting the theory part of things, application was an issue. And this is something that all the units within the course of consortium would look at. You can get the theory, but how do we know ap apply what we've learned? And so when we looked across the region, we said, no, there's something we needed to do. And Open Campus happened to have had two preschools. So CCDC was born out of, the, was originally the regional training in early childhood. Regional preschool started in 1975. And what we did back then was we trained early childhood ed educators across the region. So we started out as a regional training preschool. And so we have evolved back into this after recognizing that the need was very much there. So what Bloom does is Bloom provides the learning environment for practitioners to be able to do the practical side of things. Bloom is also, our main focus is learning through play. And so when you, you, you get to see the children in action learning through building projects, through conversation, through um, outside what we call structured play. And they've been able to grow from that, learn a lot more than, and, and enjoy the school environment. So, so it's a, sorry, Cecile, it's, it's actually a preschool environment. Yes. yes. With so real we, life kids. With real life kids. So Bloom, and we have two. We have Bloom Jamaica and Bloom Trinidad, TT we call it, Bloom TT. They're real preschools. Bloom Jamaica caters to birth and up from birth years, birth to five years old, while Bloom Trinidad caters for the two and a half to four and a half year old. Children come from within the communities, from for us here in Jamaica, from the university itself. In Trinidad, it's primarily from the community, our students, our staff, those who recognize that we have a special 
laboratory preschool where we are actually doing the research. So if it is the school operates that we could create a toy or a concept that we feel um, our professors feel that this would be something that could um, help with a concept at the early childhood level. And what we do is we ask our parents, would you be willing for your child to participate in this? And of course, our parents are just like us. They're willing to jump and help. And once they say yes, then we move up through the process and we get our ethical approval and everything. And we, we do a mini a research to find out within the sector, okay, so this child uses this toy, this child, what does it do? How does it work? And so it, it creates that environment to be a preschool first, but also a training institution for, mm. for our practitioners, as well as a research site for, for learning new things about children. Real application. Real application. Wow. So if, if I live in the Mona community, how can I get my child into Bloom, Jamaica? Uh, all you need to do is come and visit us, uh, visit us at the Caribbean Child Development Center. Um, we Bloom also has a telephone number which I will provide and give you. And um, once you contact us or call us, um, they, we set up a tour for you to come and see the facility first. Now, bearing in mind that this is COVID time, so we really have to arrange the tours because our parents, we do have a, a secure environment for safety reasons. We've been able we've been able to create an environment that the ministry has given us, Ministry of Health has given us permission to continue to operate, and so we maintain those protocols. So once you set up, we have a, a meeting with you, and then we tell you what Bloom is all about. Same thing in Trinidad. We will provide the information, and you visit. You will be able to visit and speak with the early childhood. We, we call them early childhood coordinators, but it's actually the principal of the preschool, and they will then provide all the information that you need. All right. So you've been listening to Cecil Minot, and she is the head of um, the CCDC, and we told you what that is, and we'll repeat it. I'm going to come back to Cecil a little bit later, but remember, if you have any questions or queries, you can post them in the Facebook chat or the YouTube chat and our colleagues would relay those questions or queries to me and I would relay them to our panel. Remember this evening's program, we are featuring the Consortium for Social Development and Research which is part of the UWI Open Campus. Part of that consortium also includes the Hugh Scherer Labor Studies Institute. Now this institute has been around for a very long time and with us this evening is Lauren Marsh, and he is the acting head. Um, Lauren, we said good evening to you earlier again, but welcome once again. Um, Thank you, Dr. Sam. What are you doing? I am doing great, enjoying this conversation with you guys from um, CSDR. Oh, yes, consortium. Right. So tell yes. us, I mean, and I see the very nice logo in the background there. Um, I'm, show, I'm showcasing, actually. Sorry? I'm showcasing. There you go. You're showcasing. Yes. And that is what we're doing here on Let's Start Access. Um, yes. The Institute has been in, in existence for quite a while. In fact, it predated the open campus as we know it now. What is the mandate of the Hugh Shearer Labor Studies Institute? Yes, uh, so essentially the Institute has been around from 1963. So it's the oldest unit in the consortium. Uh, our responsibility or mandate is to provide uh, labor related research and uh, training for stakeholders and partners across the Caribbean region. Uh, the institution was started by training. We had two flagship courses, which were the Certificate in Labor Studies and the Introduction to Labor Studies. And we eventually evolved and we did uh, more research and consultation for our partners, colleagues, right across the region. Uh, with COVID-19, uh, we're now seeing an increased demand for consultation or advice and support across the Caribbean, because the fact is many labor markets, many organizations as well, uh, have been impacted negatively by the pandemic. So our colleagues, whether they're private or public from various Caribbean territories, are now calling on us to provide advice, support, and training, uh, which is, of course, one of our primary responsibilities. Uh, today, as a matter of fact, we had a session which we were training colleagues across the Caribbean region from, I think we had St. Kitts, we had trained at Barbados and Montserrat. We were talking about conflict resolution in the workplace. And with COVID-19, that's a very topical issue. So we had to 
uh, provide them with the proper guidance and procedures which are necessary to ensure that they don't fall into trouble or they don't breach any of the major labor laws across the region. So essentially, that's our mandate to ensure that our partners, as I said earlier, uh, stakeholders, uh, business owners, whatever it is, they have the right information so as, as to not be in any kind of violation of the law or that they know essentially how to interact with their respective labor markets. Right. So traditionally, um, I think you were associated, the Institute was associated with trade unions. I mean, yes. but that's not the case anymore. You have moved beyond that. We have, we are still associated with trade unions, but the fact is we have broadened our scope a bit because the fact is you have other colleagues, uh, you have business owners, you have NGOs and the government organizations who are in need of our support. So we have just expanded our portfolio to incorporate these particular organizations, but we still provide training for unions as well. I wanted to talk about the session you mentioned today. I know I had your colleague here, Mr. Um, Dillon, Yes. Um, Doyle last week, uh, along with the facilitator, Dr. Um, Henry Campbell, Henry Campbell promoting, right. promoting that program. And uh, were you in that session today? Tell us how it went. I mean, were, I mean, how excited were the participants? And again, tell us what the session dealt with. Well, I tell you what, for the staff here, we were a bit nervous because we haven't done that kind of session in a while because we were online. We were hoping that the technology doesn't fail us. We we're saying we don't want to lose power and then everything goes down. But for the participants, they were quite excited. They were very receptive. It was very interactive. And Dr. Henry Campbell says, well, she told me personally just now that it's one of the best sessions she has had in recent times. We intend to have uh, follow-up sessions uh, October 20th and I think 25th. So it's a, a part of a three-part series. Today. Right. So there are going to be other sessions and they're all posted online. So if persons want more information, they can contact the Institute or they can get more information through the open campus generally. Right, and again, just for those persons who may be looking at this and may be interested in those workshops, you can actually register at the local open campus site in your country. Yes. So right across the 16 countries, you can go to the site that is closest to you and register for those workshops that are coming up as um, Lauren says on the 20th, and I think is on the 25th. I was going to be dealing with emotional intelligence is being dealt with on the 25th. Really interesting stuff. And yes. as he said, Dr. Henry Campbell is an awesome facilitator that you don't want yes, to miss this. And um, the cost is also really, really affordable. I think it's mm -hmm. like $50 for individual. 50 US dollars. Yeah, for yes. individual persons. And the more the merrier, the more persons from your organization who you register, the, the, the better the price is. You could possibly this, uh, you know, there's a discount for persons who would send uh, over three persons. So there we can always go. discuss the cost going forward. All right. Yes. Right. So apart from the, the three part series, which you're offering now online, venturing in the online arena, even though we're the open campus, traditionally your programs were face to face because you brought persons from all over the Caribbean in the past and in more recent times. Um, stakeholders from Jamaica. What other programs are you currently offering, um, Lauren? Mm -hmm. So we also have a, co a course in productivity management. And that's now one of our flagship courses. Uh, it was established in 2016. That we are looking to now offer online going forward, hopefully in 2021. And we have our introduction to labor studies, as I mentioned earlier, and the certification in labor studies, which we'll also be hosting next year. But all the courses that we have and workshops <clears throat> will be provided online to persons who are interested going forward. All right. So we are, the, the, the Labor Studies Institute is moving its programs online in that way people from Very anywhere awesome. in the world can access these programs because we're the open campus. We are an online campus. We were yes. made for COVID, right, Cecile? Yes. yes. <laughs> I agree, Doc. <laughs> All right. So um, thank you so much, Lauren. We're going to come back to you during the discussion phase. I'm going to introduce my other colleague, Sarita Buchanan. That sounds like a real powerful name, you know, Buchanan. <laughs> Sarita is the head of the Social Work Training and Research Center. Um, Sarita, let's start, first of all, you 
um, similar to, to um, Mr. Marsh, the, Insta, the center was rebranded, I think, last year, two years ago. Tell yeah. us about the rebranding and, I mean, what was the rationale for the, the um, rebranding? Okay, thank you so much again. I'm, it, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And that's always a good place to start. And I'll actually start by making a correction to something that Lauren Marsh said. The Social Work Training and Research Center is actually the, L, the oldest unit within the consortium. And there, there you go. Actually, we have a book that speaks to the fact that the, the other centers came out of the Social Work Training and Research Center. So just a correction for everyone there. And just to share with you that we started in 1962 under the name Social Welfare Training Center. And a lot of persons throughout the region will know that name because we started with, with a purpose of training paraprofessional social workers across the Eastern Caribbean. So back in those days, we had persons from all over, um, over 50, 60 persons each year. They would actually live here because we have accommodations here. They would stay with us here. They would study for four months. And it was actually a model that was utilized and adopted from Britain. And it was also adopted in different parts of the world after our study was done. A study of what we did was done. And so basically we kind of moved from that. What we realized was happening with this name of social welfare. It happened in a time when that was the catch name in terms of looking at how the work that, well, what we call it now social workers did, it was on a social welfare model, it was based on the political era that it came out of. And so we had to transition from that because we realized even at our site, we're located physically in Jamaica, but we operate across the region, just like our other um, sister units or brother units, <laughs> just to be um, <laughs> politically um, correct. <laughs> politically correct in that one. Um, so basically what we had to do is we had to look at our name because we had all kinds of misinterpretations of that name. So people thought we were giving out handouts. And so it was about welfare. It's about, okay, you're providing accommodations for free and all of those things. And we had to look at it. Yes, it was very interesting. And we had to look at it and to say, okay, are we really just looking at social welfare anymore? But that in that time, we were looking at training social service officers and social welfare. But now what we evolved into was we're doing youth work. We were doing mental health. We we're doing all kinds of things that expands into what we call the discipline of social work. And I, there's so much more I could say about that. But of course, because of time, and I know we have another session, I actually want to share a little. Because when you talk about child care and child development, or you talk about labor studies, it's clear to everyone what that is. But sometimes people hear social work and they're very confused. But the, just to say briefly, it covers a whole lot of things. It's really about a collective well-being of peoples, individuals, groups, families. So what we basically do is everything that's related to that, so mental health, youth work, um, social development, anything that has to do with that in terms of research, education and policy, those are the things we look at. And of course, I can share in terms of some of the things that we do, but I'll allow you to ask some questions, some further questions. <laughs> Very interestingly, um, Sarita, research was added to the new rebranded title. Can you explain to us why that was so? Well, what we realized is that we wanted persons to understand that we weren't just picking courses out of the air that a lot of the work that we were doing in action research, as Cecile said earlier, it was informing the programs that we did. But the reality is that you, the, the, the name is important. We needed persons to understand that we, for example, just to give you a basic example, we were the ones that, 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 that did the Commonwealth Youth Program. We offered it to the university across the region. And that came out of the myriad of research that we were doing on youth development, not just in Jamaica and the Caribbean, but we were partnering with international groups to actually look at how it is that youth development is done and how it is that you can transition that into education. And so we thought, listen, we need people to know that we do research. Research is a key part of what we do. We do evaluation research. So for example, we were the ones that evaluated the National Youth Service and the Career Advancement Program. And that was a five-year project with the IDB, that's International Development Bank. And so a lot of what we were producing was around research that was guiding what we did, what we produced, how we informed policy, even at CARICOM. We were actually integral in terms of working with the youth development policy as well. So we just wanted persons to know that, listen, what's in a name? 
we want you to understand what social work training and research center is all about. Yes, names are really, really important and, you know, help as well to sell the organization and what you do. And for, for in the interest of full disclosure, I'm a graduate of the Commonwealth Youth Program, the Diploma Program, Wonderful. a long, long time ago. I won't tell you when. <laughs> That's great to hear. <laughs> but I, did, I did, in fact, do that program because um, in another life, I was a, a youth activist. <laughs> great, great, great. Um, all right. So... You also offer a number of programs. Mm -hmm. um, are these programs, before we speak about the actual programs, are they online yet or are you moving them online? Well, right now we actually have most of them online. Um, Great. But all of them, because of COVID, we're hoping to do a sort of mixed uh, mode of approach of offering those programs. Mm -hmm. But I actually want to share one quick one because then the mental health is a key thing to what's happening now with the pandemic going on and as both my colleagues mentioned that's the thing about the consortium whatever we do is related to what is happening in the present so our programs are current they're relevant and they are providing what we need so just last night we had uh, our orientation for our community mental health first responders course one of the things we realized is that we don't have a program on mental health a full program but what we also do have is a first responders course and across the globe you find that there are countries that have first responders whether it's in communities whether it's in offices or in particular institutions having first responders for mental health is so key and that's one of the programs that we are piloting right now and i must say thank you to the eu and jc for that and we're also doing like the 10-week course in the principles and practice of social work and those are just two of the programs that we we are doing right now um and we're hoping to start the community yeah so i mean this is this program is being organized by the marketing and communicate oh sorry sirita this 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 program this evening has been organized by the marketing and communications department of the open campus so i want you to go back to the programs because i'm, I'm not sure if our viewers heard the names of the two programs you mentioned because you spoke a little quickly so again tell us about the two programs you're piloting or the program you're piloting and how can people become part of these programs going forward okay thank you for that my apologies it's a very long name so it's the community mental health first responders course um right now we're piloting that one and it's being funded by the jamaica social investment fund through the eu european union right. the poverty reduction program so we have selected particular particular persons within communities for that so for right now, we're not accepting persons externally, but what we are doing is we're putting okay. the program through a piloting phase and it will be approved through the university so that we can offer it. I know that Montserrat and I think St. Kitts is already interested. I, I don't think it's, I can't remember who St. Kitts um, in actually offering that program. And so we are uh, looking to develop that. And also I mentioned the 10 week course in the principles and practice of social work. And so that will give you an idea. That is a program that will give persons an idea of what social work is, um, how it is that we, you, you operate as a social worker and how you practice as a social worker. Um, and then of course, I'd mentioned the community leadership um, and development program, which is which will start next week actually. Yes. And how persons okay. can apply for those two, let me just answer that. Um, mm -hmm. we, you can contact us and I'm sure at the end, we'll give all our information via email um, I won't give that out now, and then we'll send you an electronic um, form that you can complete and send back to us. Um, yeah. All right. Are there specific requirements for these programs? No, the good Entry thing. Entry requirements. Okay. The good thing about the Open Campus is that how we look at our programs is that we meet people where they are. So the first thing is the application process. So it depends on where they are. There isn't a specific requirement. It's more about retooling and developing persons in particular ways. And so if mm -hmm. persons are, are reading at a particular grade level and have a particular interest, or we choose persons who, are, who have done their PhD if they want and they want to learn about a particular area. So it's more about retooling and, and upskilling of different persons in particular areas. All right, giving access. That's what we're all about at the Open Campus. And that's why this program is called Let's Talk Access. <laughs> that's right. Okay. All right, um, our colleague, from one has not joined us so we will continue the discussion and um 
Sarita, I wanted to ask, well, I think I, I need to go back to Cecile now and we can discuss generally. Cecile, you said earlier you work with a number of partners and I, um, Sarita mentioned a couple that she's working with from her unit. Who are some of the partners that um, CSDR uh, are working with and what have they contributed to some of these programs? Okay, so within the units themselves, um, they our projects are funded as Sarita had said and so have Lauren from various external um, partners. For the Caribbean Child Development Center, we have partnered, we received one of the largest projects that we brought into Open Campus is called the Transitional Living Program for Children in State Care. And that partnership is with the USAID and also with our local government ent entity, the Caribbean. The and forgive me for this, they also changed their name and there's a new acronym. So I have to look at it and say it to you, it's the, <laughs> it's the Child and Family Services, and I missed something, CPFSA, Child Protection and Family Service Agency. And so we are now, they used to be the Child Development Agency and they've now switched over to that. So we have that partnership with the, with the, and they are the agency within Jamaica that, uh, that is responsible for the protection of children here. So that, that is with the U USAID. We do a lot of work with UNICEF Jamaica as well as UNICEF in the Eastern Caribbean, as I had mentioned to you before, where we assist them with training programs for early childhood practitioners, as well as for child rights. Um, child rights um, workshops. And so we do that, those, we haven't done that in a while because we've been focusing primarily on the Transitional Living Project, which is a, which is a six year project, which comes to an end December of this year. Um, that is to a tune of over 5 million US dollars. And so we have been working to help the CPFSA to help their young people transition out of state care. So we also partnered with um, SWTRC where we looked at the life skills component, a mentorship component. We, are, we have worked with, we're working with the staff to build their capacity in mental health. We have provided two transitional apartment complex for these children who have reached 18 and they are now on the verge of um, what we call the, inter the, the, inter the rehab before they move out on their own. Um, we have helped with vocational skills training. The Open Campus actually provided 39 scholarships to the youth in this program. And a number of them utilize the scholarship to take their CSEC and they have been successful and they're heading to university. So we're very proud of that. Um, so we find that that oh. program is working. So, um, Cecilia, we, yeah. sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but the, the transitional living program sounds like a really interesting stuff. I mean, this is not something that a university would normally do, is it? No, but the Consortium for Social Development and Research, that's what we do. Um, right. and, and the key is that because we are such a special unit, we're able to go out, look for our partners, um, just like how Lauren works with the private sector, HS Hughes. Lauren's unit works with the private sector. Yes, yes. <laughs> the, the acronyms, acronyms I know. The acronyms. Yes. yes, we use a lot of acronyms. Um, and and you, our partnership, so we form our partnership. And because we, we do the community work, we go on the ground, we work with our partners, we do the research to see what would work. And then based on what would work, we then look for a project, receive the funding, put the funding back into the communities that we work in and try and see how we can assist them. Um, as a matter of fact, the director's office, we just was successful with UNICEF Belize um, with that head of site, um, Doctor, where we will be working with them on a child rights and safety project. Um, that contract is about to be signed. So you see, we, we have our hands all over and the beauty about it is because the open campus has that 17 country reach, the consortium can use our sites just like what we're doing now to ensure that our work makes its way out into the region. 
Um, so I think primarily the units mostly focus with international partners. Um, we have some local partners like the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. For us at, Car the Car at Caribbean Child Development Center, we have partnered with the Chase Fund here in Jamaica, which have assisted us with rehabilitating our early childhood program, Bloom, here. So um, we, those are a number of the partners. We, we, we Okay. Yeah. All right, um, Lauren, what about the Hushera Institute? Who are some of your partners? Um, I know you said in the past you did a lot of regional programs. Now you're trying to do these programs again, but online. Who are some of the partners you work with in Jamaica and regionally or internationally? Mm. All right, so we, we have some partners who have been with us uh, since the 60s or the early days. Uh, the International Labour Organization, for example, the ILO, we work with them continuously. And that has been before my time. So when I check the history, I see that we have been working <clears throat> on various courses or projects uh, which were funded by the International Labour Organization or the ILO. Uh, in recent times, we've been working more with the Caribbean Congress of Labour. And we recently had a course where we're training delegates from various Caribbean territories in industrial relations. And that was a huge success as well. Uh, we have worked last year with the government of Anguilla in uh, hosting a course uh, in dispute resolution. So those are our international regional partners that I can remember for now. Uh, the fact is, well, before I move to the, to the local partners, we have made several attempts to partner with other labor colleges in the Caribbean region because you have other labor colleges of, which are similar. You have Cipriani, if I can remember, the Barbados Workers Union Labor College, and you have Critchlow Labor College. So we, are, we have been trying to integrate our mandate with theirs on certain research projects, but it's, it has not been successful to date. And I hope that this changes over time. Uh, local partners, we're now working with the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports on matters pertaining to sexual harassment. So we're now delivering courses or training or workshops which focus specifically on sexual harassment in the workplace. We have worked with Carib Cement, another local entity or regional entity, the Jamaica Simulation Authority, and we recently signed a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Labor and Social Security uh, in Jamaica. So we have been making some strides and we've been expanding our affiliations, our partnership with other organizations which may have concerns, which as an institute we need to address. All right, good stuff. So working right across the spectrum, private yes. sector, government, non-governmental organizations, right. international agencies. Mm -hmm. um, this question I'm gonna ask all three of you and you can respond accordingly. Do you offer customized programs? In other words, let's take a Carib Cement, for example, or any company anywhere across um, the region or the world for that matter, and they have a particular need, can they come to you and you develop a program and deliver it for them? Dr. Go ahead, Sama, um, Lauren, I see you can't me, wait. Yes, let me go ahead because that is something we've been doing of recent. And in the last academic year, um, we offered 31 training courses. And of the 31, I'll say at least 20 were customized courses for partners uh, within the Jamaica and the Caribbean region. So we do that. And these MOUs I mentioned earlier for these organizations, Caribbean Cement Ministry of Labor and Social Security and so on, we provide specialized training for them. So where there's a need, we will fill that gap and train their, their managers or their staff members. And that's Sarita? A, yes, that's the same for us here. I mean, there, just today we got a call from a local ministry about doing some training for them and they have some social workers that they need training in particular areas and so on a day-to-day -day basis we get con um, contact from different entities right now we are trying to get an MOU signed for the past couple of years and I think it's a it's a difficulty because of um, language barrier with a, a university in Germany to actually do some partnership with um, engaging or practicum students in terms of social work where we can have exchange and do some of that. So in terms of that level of partnership and actually having that, we have a lot of training opportunities and with 
I mean, I, you look at the pandemic and it, it's really awful, but it, what it's also showing us is that our work is not just national or regional, but that globally people want what we have. And that's what we're seeing increasingly. And so even that partnership that we we're wanting to have with Germany, we we're realizing instead of that big project that we wanted to start with having persons come here and stay with us in Jamaica, where we would take them out on excursions. It was so exciting. We thought, okay, let us do something online as a start. We have that exchange. Right. We are in social work, we have something called Human Skills Lab. We can start with that because it's part mm -hmm. of the social work practice. And so that's just one example of, you know, the sort of- All right, practice. so you have a need. You can come to the open campus, come to any of the units in um, CSDR and they can um, customize a program for you. Yes, Cecile? Um, yes, and we do the same. So that is one of the things about the consortium is that we do customize programs for our, once you give us a call, we work with you to design it to see what it is. Um, I wanted to touch on the fact that um, what Sarita said, Bloom also has a practicum program through MOUs with some universities in Canada where their students actually have come down to Jamaica. They were here in January, just before COVID. Um, yes, they spent, um, four weeks with us, which we thought, thought was really good. And so they were in the classroom. And then the idea now is for um, our students should have gone up there, but we're working on that. COVID had put a halt on that, but it, it's it's the way how we operate in the sense that once, once you give us a call, we see how we can work our programs to your needs. And in, and in that case, the classroom was actually the preschool. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just wanted to get that clarified. The, right. the learning environment. Right, right. Yes. yes. So that must have been an awesome experience, Cecile, for um, Canadians, uh, Canadian students to, first of, so they're not only getting an education with a Caribbean flavor, they're immersed in the Jamaican culture for four weeks. Four weeks. And this is through the um, George Brown College. We have a really good MOU and partnership. Yes. Yes. And so they came in January and the students were, they didn't want to leave. And so Sarita, once you get your German MOU going, you yeah. may have similar um, with um, German students coming to Jamaica or, or to um, Bloom TT um, um, CC. Oh, yes, yes. 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 Not like that anyway, but you know, we just have to work out a language barrier <laughs> at some levels of the process. All right, and so that, that is easy with the German embassy in Jamaica, yes? <laughs> <laughs> that's correct yes <laughs> all right guys i want to i mean we've been talking and touching on covid um throughout the night but i want to deal specifically with covid for the next couple of minutes and cecile to zoom in on you specifically and your group and um to say to you really really big kudos to you and your group of counselors i mean i know this is your pet area your department cecile was able to respond during the COVID pandemic to students and staff of the open campus in a way that no one else could have done this. Tell us about this. So when COVID came about in March, one of the things that we recognized was that there would be a need for us to provide some form of emotional support for staff and students. And so in discussion, the first thing we did was we brought together a number of units divisions across open campus because we're looking at staff and students and we form what we call the wellness committee which cleveland is a part of <laughs> marketing and communication has to be a part of it of course and, and through that committee we then decided the first thing we needed to do was put up a, a counseling program for our staff and students and they have been responding the other thing that we've been able to do is meet our staff and students where they're at. So we've been running some Zoom sessions, um, working with individuals one-on-one. -on -one. We've also been providing the Mindfulness Mondays, which is a series that is amazing that we all get together and we give them tips on nutrition, anxiety, how to deal with depression, how to just relax and take a break. COVID is, you know, the thing with COVID-19 is that it came about, it created a very um, stressful environment. 
But sometimes what it did was it brought, some of us were on already under stress and this then added to it. We're now put in an environment where we're working from home. We have to deal with our children, our siblings, our parents. And so what we found was that staff and students were having a very hard time. I'm really amazed at our staff at the open campus who came together and rallied and said, okay, I need to help you. What, what can I do? Some who have their basic counseling skills and then there is some of us that are actually counselors and we've just been able to rally together and provide the support so we have two online counseling emails for staff one for staff and one for student and then we also do individual one-on-one -on -one whatsapp or face or not face to face via zoom <laughs> uh, depending on the situation and what the needs are and we've been able to refer our students to the various areas of needs that they may have that they may have and mm -hmm. wasn't quite sure where to go like if they were having registration issues or something to do with apad because of the whole online stress and everything and everybody has just i'm really amazed cleveland we do have some really good people who have just come together to help each other really really awesome and you do all of this online yes everything is online Everything uh, is online. So if you have a if you have a student, for example, in Grenada or Saint Vincent, which is you know hundreds of miles away from Jamaica, what do you do? Do you refer them to a counselor in that country, or you what? How does it work? Okay, so the first thing we do is that we will handle it ourselves. Then, if we realize that this person needs um, um, someone within their country, then I do have. I've been. I've asked my heads within each country to link with the social workers within their country and form a relationship with some of our countries. But what we found is that a number of the students continue to just work with us on, via, via telephone or via a Zoom link, uh, which we call now in the counseling world, it's face to face, everybody does it through Zoom because we, not many persons do in office counseling anymore. So we've been able to work with partners on the ground as well. So it all depends on the need of the individual Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And then we link them to that. But the primary primary counseling starts once they get in touch with us via the email or through a head of site who will give them our num our WhatsApp number for us to contact them, and then we move from there. All right, awesome support there, Cecilia. So congrats again to you and your team. And I know it has to be a lot of hard work because, as you said, with COVID. I mean, there's a lot of stress on everyone, but you guys are providing the support that um, other students and staff may need. Um, Lauren, any particular challenges that COVID would have brought on during the last six months or so for the Labor Institute? Uh, well, the major one is that um, because we've gone online, really, so for our, well, students, essentially, they don't have the technology, the internet access. And that has been a major issue for them. So they cannot participate in the various courses or activities that we're having. As a matter of fact, uh, in some cases, the numbers dwindled. And I suspect it's because of this, um, this lack of technology, the in like, lack of internet or computer or so on. So that's a major issue we're having, apart from the fact that we cannot uh, physically have them in the building based on the social distance protocols. Right, because you're based at the Mona campus as well, and for all intents and purposes, it's it's uh, it's closed to students. To a certain degree, right? But they are practicing right. social distancing. Yes. Right. So, guys, the social, the, the the digital divide, you know, has its impact on on students and on us at the open campus. Sarita, any particular challenge challenges during COVID for your unit? Uh, well, similar to what Lauren said, um, for us, it's about the technology, um, but not just about, you know, access, but about the rel reliability or the type of internet that some persons may have. Some persons are using data on their phones. And so you can imagine trying to transition a situation from a classroom space with a lecturer in the room and also the other side of it, transition into a uh, virtual space where some students are also not accustomed to using the technology. What we've found with some groups of persons is that we, we had to actually ask them to come in because they wanted to come in. 
and we'd help them, show them how to use the technology. We would, would do small groups, groups of five, bring them into the large classroom, show them how to maneuver because they the touch and they being able to maneuver that. And, you know, because we have to realize, I mean, coming back to our history, we have had or, or, or this idea of access. We or we're, we're not dealing with the typical students of, okay, coming right out of high school. We have students of all ages, all types of on the different side of the digital divide, the digital migrants who are trying to learn to turn on the computer. They're coming right. from the community. It's very interesting. And yeah. we're also excited to learn. But those are some of the challenges because you can't move as fast with the actual content. You have to meet them where they are. So that is something that we are working through. All right. And as the online campus, we will try to ensure that we get over those hurdles as, okay. as time goes by. Definitely. Definitely. All right, so we have just about um, nine minutes. What I want to do now for each of you is for you to give some contact information, some email addresses where people can reach you if they uh, want to do programs, um, custom-made programs, if they want to sign up, because I know um, we are now doing recruitment as well for January 2021. So if you have programs coming up for January 2021, can you tell us what those are and what are your deadlines? Let's start with you, Sarita. Okay, so for us, we have a standard email. We have many emails, but we ask that person send the general emails to swtrc at open.ue.edu. And let me do that again, swtrc that is Social Work Training and Research Center at open.uwi.edu. And we have right. our 10 week course in the principles and practice of social work that's going on now that will start again for January. So we are taking applications for January right now. We have our, our, our mental health first responders course that we're hoping to start again in the academic, in the new, in the new semester, I should say. We're not sure if that's January. We want to ensure that we have everything in place for that one. And of course, we have our community leadership and development program that we have starting as well. So swtrc at open.uwi.edu. Um, for those programs starting in January, when is your registration deadline or application deadline? So that's a very good question. And I really should have checked with my office before I came on the live. I would have to check and get back to you. But I'm thinking towards the end of November would be a good time. Okay. But if you're late, we're going to look at it as well. Don't put it to the Christmas. Don't wait till the December period when things are rushing. But basically, those programs are available. And you should be able to see that on our social media page, on, on our um, website, website, of course. That's correct, our web page. All right, um, Lauren, what programs are you offering coming up in January? All right, Doc, so we'll continue with training in uh, dispute resolution, of course, uh, labor laws, a Caribbean perspective, and we intend to also host the certificate in labor service next year. But I, will, I can provide a schedule, a more detailed one. I'm going to give you, give, well, give colleagues my email, my personal email, as a matter of fact, so they can contact me, and I will pass on the information to them. So my email is Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N dot M-A-R-S-H at D-E-C dot U-E dot E-D-U. So it's Lauren dot Marsh at D-E-C dot U-E dot E-D-U. All right, thank you so much. And yes. Cecile, uh, I know you're talking for um, the... CCDC, uh, I know as well, you guys are offering a parenting program online as well. Yes, um, this program it should come on board next semester. Um, it will be through Bloom TT. And so for that kind of, for that information, um, if you could send your queries to CCDC, CCDC at open.uwi.edu and then we would be able to answer those questions for you. All right. That, but that's the only program that we have presently coming on stream in January, and it will be online, yes. It will be online. And I know you you, you, you are offering that currently for a cohort as well, and how is that going? Any reports on how that is going? It's pretty good so far. We also have a program, but we're 
it may very well be offered next year um, in the next academic year too. Um, it's a parenting program, just like this one, but it's more specific towards how to work with your children while you're at home. So it's giving you activities during COVID, parenting tips, um, and especially with the online for, as you know, preschoolers are, some are doing online classes. So we've been able this semester <laughs> to help our parents understand how preschoolers do online classes. And it did, it went very well, actually. It must have been very exciting. It was, and it was, it was quite something. The parents, I think, learned a lot because mm -hmm. the thought of a three, four-year-old doing online classes, sometimes people go, uh-uh, but it works. They're there. Okay. All right. Believe it or not, we have, we're almost there with the hour. So I'm going to give each of you uh, a one minute to wrap up. I'm going to start with you, um, Lauren Marsh from the Hushara Labor Studies Institute. Final words? Mm. Uh, simply, colleagues, uh, contact us, send me an email. Uh, the fact is that we have several exciting courses which are very useful to our partners in the public and private sector. If you want more information on how to design your company policies, give us a call. If you want any kind of advice as it pertains to how to handle any kind of employment related matter, give us a call as well or email us. Uh, if you want to actually get some kind of qualification uh, in labor studies, again, contact us. And we're quite flexible, as mentioned by Dr. Sam. We will tailor whatever course you want in labor studies, we can tailor. We have the expertise, we have the technology, we have the knowledge, and of course, we have a very competent head who's not here right now. So the fact is, contact us, send me an email and we can speak further. It's as simple as that. All right, Sarita Buchanan, Social Work Training and Research Center. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll start where Lauren left off as well. Um, you can contact us on our emails, um, swtrc at open.ua.edu. We're open to hearing from you, all your training needs within social work, social development, all your research needs, program evaluation, because that's a key part of what we do. A lot of the work that we've been doing is around program evaluation. And we offer different, different areas, mental health, youth work, anything you can think of that is social work and social development related. Contact us and we will gladly look forward to welcoming you here and helping you however best we can in outreach, research, training. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Sarita. Cecile, the final word falls on you. <laughs> well, I know that Wanda wasn't here, wasn't able to make it, but I just wanted to look at this in the sense that there are four units. Um, yes, SWTRC is the oldest, but Wanda is the youngest. And in between, okay. <laughs> and Wanda actually works with women and children development. So, it's just to give everybody Cleveland an idea of the range that we are, so and, and the kind of work that we do. So one is more in gender development, and they have a number of programs themselves that we will share with you so that you could put it on the marketing website for us. Um, final word, um, CSDR is a very specialized unit within the open campus. I don't know if we exist anywhere else. Um, we, are, we offer very special programs, each of us um, we, we, we integ we're, we're integrated in the sense that we do research, we do community work, we work with government to help them establish policy and development. But at the same time, our area of expertise is a little different. And that's the beauty about us is that we can all come together and do a big project because we do have all these various special areas, which is something that we're thinking of in the future. And at the same time, we can work individually to help our colleagues and our organizations throughout the region and also throughout the world. So I just wanted to say that th that's who we are. Um, and I must say that the staff, they're vibrant, ready to go, as you can see. We are always there. Ready to, to go. Ready to go, ready to help anyone <laughs> who wants All our right. We are here to provide the, the, the customized training and program as, as they see fit online. So thank All you. right. Thank you so much, um, Cecile Minot, uh, Lauren Marsh, and Sirita Buchanan. Thank you so much. All part of the SWRC.
Um, I'm sorry, of the S, um, the yes. R. <laughs> there you go. And, um, <laughs> it's easier to just, it's easier to clean if you we just understand. We understand, we understand, Dr. Sir. Just say the yeah, consortium. Yeah, the acronyms, the acronyms. Yeah. If you say the consortium, <laughs> but, you will be okay. Right. And of course, to our viewers, remember, you can get additional information on the work of CSDR and the various units by visiting our website, www.open.uwi.edu. And as for me, I just want to say thank you for watching. On behalf of the team in the background, David Foster, Patrick Johnson, Cherise Glasgow, and Marcia Reed, I am Cleveland Sam. Until next time, goodbye.